Well, last week, uh, we, we heard a powerful message from Bishop Adolfo, um, who taught us on the wonders of thanksgiving. All right, so those of you that were here, you're blessed. Those of you that weren't, make sure that you listen to that message on our app or on our website. Now, he emphasized about uh, living a life of thanksgiving. And that thanksgiving is uh, one of the, th the things that we do with thanksgiving is appreciating what Jesus has done for us. And to show our appreciation, we must not make excuses, he said, but come to worship, amen, on the Lord's day. So come to worship the Lord on the Lord's day. And he was saying, no, don't make excuses. And of course, he's talking about, you know, uh, when we have an opportunity that we can actually come, that we would, we would make uh, an effort that we would actually prioritize coming on the Lord's day to celebrate God and to worship Him. Now, of course, there are people that have to work. Uh, that's part of what they do, and that's part of the thing that they have to do, and, you know, you, you, you have to work. But to choose to work when you don't have to is another thing. When you choose going somewhere else instead of coming to worship for two hours only on a Lord's Day, then there's something wrong. And so he said, that's making excuses. That means you don't appreciate because we choose to show our appreciation, he said, like uh, the, the leper, the one leper who came back that was healed. There were 10 of them. Nine of them did not appreciate it. They just, they got healed, they got blessed, and they went around doing their own thing and, you know, walking and enjoying what they're healing. But one person came back to Jesus and appreciate Him and worship Him. And so... What he was saying is that when we, when we are, uh, especially that we have come to know the Lord, God has done many things in our life. And to show our appreciation to come to the Lord's house for two hours on the Lord's day is an appreciation. That's Thanksgiving, all right? So, but I believe all of us here would like to live a life of Thanksgiving to God. I believe that. I don't think there is anyone here in this house who would say to me pastor i don't want to thank god i don't appreciate him or i don't want to have to worship him i don't think there is anybody here like that okay so but why is it then all right why is it then that there are still many of us who miss sunday worship are you hearing me what why the only day for a couple of hours of the Lord's Day, and we still miss it. Now, of course, I'm not talking about our church only, okay? So don't feel like I'm attacking you. I'm not talking about our church only, but the church, the body of Christ in general, especially in North America. I'm talking about that. Um, and especially during summer. <laughs> you know, other countries are not like this. So in North America, somehow, especially during summer, we feel like, oh, we can do whatever we want and, you know, the only day that we've got. And so we've forgotten about the Lord's day of worshiping Him and we have made other choices instead. So I believe um, the reason that people uh, um, are missing Sunday worship is because they are distracted by so many things in their life that they miss the one important thing. Amen? And so, even though, all right, we want to appreciate God, we want to thank God, but still we miss it because there are many things that distract their life. They miss that one important thing. So today, I want us to learn uh, this message called, Let the One Thing Be the Main Thing. Let the One Thing Be the Main Thing. Now, I want you to turn with me to a passage of Scripture in Luke chapter 10, and we're going to read verse 38 down to 42. All right, it says this. As Jesus and his disciples were on their way, he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, 
Don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, You are worried and upset about many things. But only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better, and it will not be taken away from her. Well, God bless His Word. Now, I want you for a moment so that we can understand the, the context of this. I want you for a moment to imagine yourself in this scenario. Imagine that you're in that picture, in this narrative, and be a part of, uh, of that time. And being there, I want you to imagine yourself at that time. See, Jesus was traveling with his disciples. And wherever Jesus traveled, people were following him. He had a lot of people around him, not only his disciples, but people who um, or hearing him and wanted to hear him and, and, and they wanted to be with him. And so he came to a village and in this village there was Martha's home and Martha welcomed him into her home and, and she has a sister. Her sister is Mary. So they are the brothers of Lazarus. Okay, so you gotta, you gotta understand this, this context. So, and I want you to know that everyone, when he entered, obviously his disciples entered and everybody else was with him, entered the home because she opened it for them. Now, it must probably be a large home because, you know, to entertain that many people, all right? And so there were a lot of people in there. So I want you to imagine that. And whenever Jesus was around, there was always the opportunity to hear the word of God. And the presence of Jesus brought the kingdom, uh, the kingdom of God wherever he was. And wherever he is, there's always, uh, there's always the atmosphere for miracles. And that's the reason why people followed him. Because anytime Jesus could say something, or anytime something could happen, and they could get blessed or get healed, or something would happen. And so, they wanted to be there at that moment. And so, uh, wherever Jesus went, he always brought the kingdom of God, and he, he always spoke the word, and he was bringing the kingdom of heaven here to earth. And that's why he told his disciples to do that. You see, so when he speaks, life will always flow. He, when he speaks, the atmosphere changes. And he speaks to the winds and to the storm, and they would stop. He could actually speak into a situation. And therefore, when you are in his presence, you could be sick and be immediately healed. Amen? You could be discouraged, and by his word, you can be encouraged. Amen? Something could change in your situation. You see, so if you wanted to get blessed, then you want to be around him and his word. Are you hearing me? Because one word from the Lord can change your life and your destiny. Amen? And so you may be saying, well, Jesus is not here. Well, let me tell you something. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word is God. All right? Amen? And so we're talking about in the beginning, he was already there. Nothing was made without him. And he says, in him there is life. And that is the light of men. So in other words, wherever there is the word of God and the presence of God, anything could happen in your life. Amen? And that's why we don't want to miss that. And so here, here was Mary. That's why Jesus, when he entered the room, Mary immediately saw what needed to happen. So Mary sat at his feet. So when Jesus began to speak, Mary decided she was going to listen. Now remember, this is the same Mary that poured the perfume, the expensive perfume at his feet. This is the same Mary. Okay? So Mary sat at his feet. Now, with all that is going on in the house, the one thing that Mary wanted to do was sit in the presence of Jesus and listen to him. We don't want to think there's chaos, commotion going on, people trying to go through, people, you know, 
trying to fit inside the house and 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 here's Martha running around trying to serve through the people and here was Mar Mary sitting down and listening right now in a large home of course they would have chairs and that you could recline but so you didn't have to be at the at, at the at the floor but to sit at the Lord's feet is a posture of a disciple all right it was a posture of a disciple she sat down at the Lord's feet now although Jewish women would hear the Torah in the synagogues um, they were not taught by rabbis in school the boys were expected to even recite the Torah but the the girls were not taught and so this was a rare opportunity then for Mary to be taught to sit at the at the foot of Jesus so to her she wanted to have that opportunity and this was the main thing this was the main thing on the other hand we see Martha now you see her, you're still in the picture you're watching the things going on inside that house Martha the Bible says was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made she did many things but she missed one thing which is the main thing <laughs> are you hearing me all right she did many things but she missed the one thing which is the main thing now here's an important observation people can be in the same room but not everyone will be in the presence of God are you hearing me all right it's like those disciples that were walking with Jesus everybody was hitting him everybody was around him but only that person who persevered and by just touching the garment she was healed but everybody else was touching him you know, it was those people that would pursue him. So not everybody who's in the same room would enter into the presence of God. And so Mary was, was the one pursuing the Lord and she was there. But Martha was running around. She could hear probably Jesus saying, because they didn't have amplification. He had to make, uh, 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 raise his voice a little bit so people can hear. All right, so she's probably going around with her with her trays and everything and she's hearing Jesus on the background but she's distracted with everything else and so she can hear the word and not really receive the word and so that is very important for us to understand all right so it doesn't matter you know we could be distracted by other things but really not have the main thing and so it is those who pursue him so the question we should ask ourselves is this how can we avoid missing the one thing how can we let the one thing be the main thing in our lives so i'm going to share with you some some principles this morning the first one is this focus on the one thing there are many things but focus on one thing don't get distracted with many things tell the person beside you focus on one thing all right don't get distracted with the many things do you know what is the one thing in your life that you need to focus do you know what that is you know what Paul said in Philippians chapter 3 verse 13 to 14 here's what Paul said brothers and sisters I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it here's what he said but one thing now see among the other things, one thing I do forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus so Paul is saying there is only one thing I do and that is the main thing and that is to press on toward the goal of my heavenly calling that is my one thing what is your one thing to get rich what is your one thing to get a beautiful lifestyle what is the one thing all right so don't get distracted by all the other things all right focus on the one thing Martha was worried about many things Jesus himself said so she was worried about many things she wanted to entertain Jesus and the disciples and you know Jesus traveled with a lot of people she was worried that they were not going to get served since that's why she was getting upset there were so many people around and she got upset because she was worried 
uh, Jesus said she's worried about many things. So there was nothing wrong here. Hear me for a moment. There's nothing wrong what Martha wanted to do. She wanted to serve, right? There's nothing wrong with that. That was actually a cultural expectation. Women in that culture were expected to fulfill domestic uh, responsibilities. But Jesus corrected her to focus. Because, you know, in her desperation, she was so, so upset already in her desperation, she even accused Jesus. Imagine accusing Jesus. You don't even care. You should tell her to help me. Can you imagine telling Jesus that? You see, because she was getting all uptight, upset, and she, that was the responsibility of women was to fulfill that domestic responsibility. But Jesus corrected her to refocus. He told her that there was something more important. And there was something better than running around being busy. <laughs> you know, with all the things that is going on, there was only one thing that was needed. That's what Jesus said. And that was to be in His presence. That was the one thing. Martha was focused on doing, 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 doing. But the most important thing was to her being. And that's what Mary decided to learn, was how her being could be changed. But you see, we could go around doing, 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 and we think we're doing it for God. All right? But we can see that the Lord actually corrected him. And this teaches us a lesson, that the Martha attitude is not all correct. Sometimes we lift up Martha so much. Oh, Martha, how did you? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's not all that correct. Because we can hear what Jesus said. It is fine to be doing preparations to serve. But if we will do that instead of being in His presence and listening to His word, it is not okay. Are you hearing me? It matters to Jesus what you do with your time. There are things you cannot avoid. You could be uh, teaching in Sunday school because you're teaching the Word. That's part of it. You know, you, you could be preparing other things, you know, uh, uh, because you, you're called, because you're, you're working. That's what you're doing. But when you're supposed to be preparing and when is the Word of God that you should be hearing, you need to know what's the priority. If you've got to be preparing something, then prepare it ahead of time so that when the time of the Word is there, you're there to listen and hear because God is more interested with your being. Now, I didn't correct her. It was Jesus who corrected her. And I'm just showing you that sometimes we think the Martha is okay. Oh, yeah, she's Martha. She'll do that work, not even go to church. She'll just do that. Because she's preparing. That's wrong. <laughs> because Jesus himself said, Martha, you are worried about many things. But there's only one thing that is needed. And Mary did that. So Jesus knows. And let me tell you something. We could be doing those things and, and we think that Jesus approves. But Jesus didn't approve of Martha. He, he said, you're worried about it. In other words, what he's saying is, look, I'm not even thinking about you going to feed all of this. Listen, you sit here <laughs> and just listen to the word of God because you don't have to worry about all these people around. Now, sometimes we need to think about that. Amen? And so that's a good observation for us to see. It matters to Jesus what we do with our time. It matters to him. And he told Martha that she missed the most important thing because she spent so much time with the things that were unnecessary. It wasn't necessary to do all of that because Jesus was in the house. Amen. When Jesus is in the house, everything else is not important compared to him. Amen. And so that gives us a that, that gives us an, an important thing in our life and what is that one thing in our life? Because we could get busy 
doing many other things in our life. You know, I got to fix this. I got to do this in my life. I got I to gotta do other things. I got to do my laundry. I gotta, but it's time to be in the presence of God, to hear His Word. And Jesus is concerned about that. He's concerned about that. And so we need to, we need to see what Jesus is saying. So often, right, uh, Jesus teaches us the very important lesson here. A very important principle that Jesus teaches us is focus on the essentials and not on the non-essential. Sometimes we major on the minor. We're doing a lot of the that the things that are not important. A lot of the things that we do have no eternal value. A lot of the things that we get busy doing in our life have no eternal value because one day we're going to be facing the Lord of Lords and He's going to ask us, what did you do with your life? Oh, I spent it in the mall. Oh, I spent it in Niagara. You mean to tell me you were not developing and hearing my word in my presence during the time that you're supposed to be so the lord the lord is gonna we're gonna face the lord one day so often we get distracted by the little things we miss the most important thing we get busy preparing for a christmas party and we forget the reason for the party we get busy preparing for the birthday party and we miss the birthday celebrant. You know what I'm saying? We get so concerned with preparations and in the process we hurt the people that we love. And church goers are distracted by the people in the church. What they're wearing, who they are with, you know, they're looking and they're, you know, they're worshiping and they start looking at their fingernails. And I mean... We get distracted by so many little things, all right, instead of focusing on God. And so we can be in the same room and not press in to the presence of God. <laughs> they see all the details and miss the presence of God. You know, they look and, oh, is the lights okay? Is this okay? Everything. Instead of pressing in, worshiping the Lord and trying to hear from Him and praying to Him. And that's why sometimes we get casual about entering into the presence of God. You know, we can come in anytime we want. Why? Because we don't really see the, the value of being in the presence of God. We don't see that value. You know, we would rather be outside doing drinking coffee or something. Because it's just music. Oh, they're just doing that. You know, I'll come in later. All right. So we don't see the value of the presence of God that as we are worshiping the Lord, His presence is there. When we are gathered together worshiping Him, that anything can happen, the atmosphere begins to change, and God could do something with your life. So there's something that we need to, need to understand. When it comes to our walk with Jesus, we get caught up with all kinds of events in our life, that we miss the one thing that is needed. And Bishop Adolfo mentioned a little bit about that. See, with all the birthday parties, weddings, children's activities, all of those things, our schedule is so full that we miss the most important thing in our life as a believer. To worship the Lord in His presence. We fill up our schedule so much that even the two hours on Sunday is taken up. We fill it up. Right? And that's the thing. That was the unbeliever. That was our life as unbeliever. We did whatever we want. Seven days a week, we did our own thing. That was our life. But the Bible says that when I receive Jesus Christ, it's no longer I that live, but Christ who lives in me. And therefore, it's no longer me. He paid for my life. And therefore, my life is dedicated to Him. My life revolves around Him. And so he's asking the two hours we miss. We fill it up. And so what happened is that we get born again. We've got a busy schedule. And so when we come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, we add Jesus to our busy schedule. Oh, Jesus, I'll fit you in. Let me, let me see my calendar. Oh, I can fit you. Mm, it's so good. Uh, I can't even find the time. Because I've filled it up with so many things that I can't even get a couple of hours to worship Him. See, that's the many things that we get busy about. 
Look at your many things that you do. Does it have eternal value? Look at the many things that we do. You see, <laughs> our first calling is still our personal devotion with the Lord. To worship Him and hear His Word. That is still our main thing. That is the main thing. Our first and foremost relationship is with Jesus. That is the main thing. So friends, focus on the one thing. Amen? Oh, I didn't hear any more amen. <laughs> focus on the one thing. That is our most. You know what you will be doing in heaven? You're not going to be playing the piano. You're not going to be playing football or basketball. When you go to heaven, the only thing you'll do is worship Him. And your life here on earth is your practice. It's time to practice what you're going to be doing for the rest of your life. Amen? You're just going to sit at His throne and do that. Nothing else you're going to do except worship the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Amen? And so, begin that now. So, the second thing is there. First is focus. And the second thing is realign your motive. Why do you do what you do? I want to ask you that. Why do you do what you do? See, Martha complained about the fact that Mary wasn't helping her. It was Martha actually who opened the, her home and welcomed Jesus and his disciples. And yet, here she was complaining about her. <laughs> All right. Colossians 3.17 tells us this. Here's the, the attitude should be. Whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through Him. See, that should be our attitude. That whatever we do, it is doing it for God. So if we're doing it for God, then we don't complain. Amen? It's interesting how people like to impress others with their hospitality and kindness but at the same time, they expect people to notice their efforts and even obligate them to help them. The scriptures teach us that we are to do it for the Lord. Don't do it for people. When you do it for, fee for people, you're going to get frustrated because you're doing it for people. But when you do it for the Lord, then you do it as a thanksgiving to God. Amen? Amen. <laughs> And so that's why it says here in Colossians 3, verse 23, 24, so just a few verses down, it says this, Whatever you do, work at it with all your heart, as working for the Lord, not for human masters, since you know that you will receive an inheritance from the Lord as a reward. It is the Lord Christ you are serving. And so it is the Lord that we are serving. Martha was so sure that she was right that she boldly went to Jesus to tell her sister to help her. She also assumed that Jesus doesn't care. I mean, that's what the scriptures tell us. Now, why would she think that? Now, probably because sometimes we think that God only works in perfect situation. That everything is okay, not in informal or seemingly busy and disorderly way, like in that room where there was so many things going on. She probably thinks Jesus doesn't work in that kind of situation. Martha was thoughtful, but she did more than what was necessary. Sometimes we do this when we want to impress people. You see, if you don't want to get distracted, check your motive. Why am I doing this? This is the time that the Lord is here, my master, who is the healer. I mean, the reason why she welcomed him into her home is because she's already heard a lot about Jesus. Jesus was healing people, performing miracles. He, she knew that he was the Lord of Lords. He was, he, even Mary actually uh, sat a, a, on his feet and actually gave the most expensive perfume. I mean, they knew who Jesus was. All right? So, she was already, he was already in there. And so... She could have stopped doing what she was doing and did the same thing as Mary. I mean, you could prepare before and then after, boom, Jesus was now speaking. Let's hear him. Be in his presence. So she did more than what was necessary. 
So if you don't want to get distracted, check your motive. When you serve people, do it without murmuring and complaining. When you give gifts, do it without murmuring and complaining. It's not something you should be upset about. If you're already serving people, don't get upset with the people that you're serving. Philippians 2.14 says, Do everything without grumbling or arguing. So we don't do it with grumbling. We don't grumble. When we are serving the Lord, let's not grumble. But instead, do it with joy in your heart. Amen? That's what it means to love the Lord with all of your heart, your mind, and your soul. It's not just doing things in the flesh. What pleases God is the attitude of your heart. See, we can come in the presence of God and try to impress Him with all our righteous deeds. See me, I'm serving, I'm doing all of this. But Jesus says there is something better and that is your personal devotion with Him. There's something better. That's why obedience to Him is better than sacrifice. You see, in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7, verse 21 to 23, Jesus said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Now, that's a very important message for us to ask ourselves, are we doing the will of our Father in heaven? Because that's the only one that will enter the kingdom of heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, will, did we not prophesy in your name? In other words, do your gifts uh, in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles. Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you away from me, you evildoers. The scriptures tell us that we could actually mention the name Lord we could actually say things about Jesus and know about Jesus and even do things for Jesus, but our heart is far from Him. So it's just a motion of doing things, being a religious thing, doing, you know, and so we need to really get our heart right and, and, and realign our motives of why we come to church. Is it because there's attendance? Do we come to church because our, of our life group? Do we come... To, to the worship celebration because of our community leader, our L5, our governmental leader? Is it because of our life group who's looking for us? Is it because we're obligated to come? Or do we come because we can't wait to be in the presence of God? We can't wait to hear His Word because one word from Him can change my life. Is it because of that? Or we got nothing else to do. Uh, I'm not busy this Sunday. I'll come to church. <laughs> All right, Be because many people in North America, they have more appointments than coming to church. Coming to church is never an appointment for them. They don't book the two hours and say 1030 to 1230, I am booked. So when somebody says, can you come to my party? I'm sorry, I can't come because I need to be in the presence of my Lord. He's centered. He's the one who blessed me. He's the one who provided for me. He's the one who healed me. He's the one who raised up my family, who kept me going. There's peace in my home because of my Lord. I cannot do anything else for that two hours. No business is going to do it. Nothing's going to be because those people are not going to bless me. They can't do that. Only God can provide for me. Only God can heal me. Only God can do the thing, the miracles in my life. Only God can do that. So we need to realign our motive. Amen. <laughs> See, friend, the most important thing is our relationship with Him. All right? Lastly, are you still with me? Choose to be with Jesus. Tell the person beside you, choose to be with Jesus. Amen. Why choose? Because you have a choice. You are not a robot. There is a choice. Let the one thing be the main thing. A relationship with Jesus is the most important thing in our life. You know what Jesus said in the Gospel of John chapter 15? We're not going to go there. But you know the story. He said, I am the vine. You are the branches. 
And those who abide in me, they will bear much fruit. In other words, when you are a branch, you're attached to the vine. The role of the branch is just to receive the nutrients and all the things that come from the vine. And that is the role of that branch. Now, if we see ourselves as the branch, if we really see that we are the branch and Jesus is the vine, then we cannot afford not to be abiding in the vine. We can't afford it. Because anyone who's disconnected from the vine dies. That's why Jesus said in that passage, without me, you can do nothing. But you see, we don't believe that. Because if we truly believed it, we would pack the church. Are you hearing me? If we truly believed that, we would pack the church. Because we can't afford not to be in His presence. Because we know that the only nutrient, the only blessing I get is being attached to the vine. By abiding in His presence. I choose to be with Him. Apart from me, you can do nothing. The main function of the branch is to be attached to the vine. It's a personal choice you make to abide in the vine. And you know what? Mary chose to be with Jesus. She gave up her responsibility. She was willing to be criticized for sitting at the feet of Jesus. In fact, Mary, Martha got mad at her and got mad at Jesus too. He told, don't you care? said Jesus. Tell my sister, what's she doing there, sitting there? There's so many people to serve. You see, Mary was willing to be criticized, to be sitting at the feet of Jesus, even though everything was going around. She knew the most important thing. Her one thing was the main thing. And she chose to be with Jesus. And you know what? Jesus said, she has done the better thing. So Jesus did not correct Mary. Even though Martha complained. Jesus didn't go, oh yeah, you're right Martha. You've been serving. You're doing so many things. Hey Mary, why don't you go up and help Martha? No, 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 no. He said, Martha, you're the one who's doing so many things. And yet she's the one who's right here because she understands that who I am. She understands that I am the Lord who provides for her. I am the Lord who can do things in her life. And therefore, she chose the better thing. You, you're worried. You're upset about many things. See, so she, he did not correct Mary. He corrected Martha. See, friends, that is the main thing. Jesus affirms Mary's choice more highly. That the choice of Mary was higher. There's nothing more important for the believer than to be a disciple. Do you know that there are many believers, not many are followers? We can all believe Jesus, but we're not all following Jesus. Not all of us are disciples. We believe Him, but here... Mary chose to be a disciple, to be, to be learning. She was willing to be criticized. You see, friends, you know, in that, in that culture, uh, as I mentioned to you, it was their responsibility. And she was willing to not do that responsibility at that moment. I'm sure she could have helped after, but at that moment, she chose the most important thing. That one thing was the main thing. See, you choose those things. You choose to be in church rather than a party. You choose to be in church rather than the mall. You choose to be in church rather than be in Niagara Falls at this time. You choose to be in the house of God. I mean, don't get me wrong. There, there are times we need to go on vacation. We take a family. That's fine. God understands that. But when you're on vacation every Sunday... Now, now I, I question your Christianity. Because now, your Christianity is no longer a, 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 a lifestyle. It's now a label. Are you hearing me? Because every Sunday during the summer, you are on vacation. <laughs> are you hearing me? <laughs> so, there's nothing wrong with going vacation. We go on vacation too. Alright, so... We, we got to do those things. That's part of family. 
But we've got to understand that we still put Jesus as a priority. And even in your vacation, you know, when, when my family goes on vacation, we might not be in this house, but we're going to a church somewhere else. Why? Because that's the time we serve the Lord. That's the time we want to hear from the Lord. So that is not a, an interruption of your life. See, I got I to gotta teach you, brothers and sisters, to come to the presence of God to worship Him for a couple hours is not an interruption of your life. Sometimes we think, oh, oh I can't do this because I got to go on Sunday. Oh, because I have to do this. And so it's like an interruption. It's as if Jesus was in the way of our life. Did you know that the very thing that, that our existence is because of Him? That we were taken from darkness into our marvelous light? That when we were in bondage, He freed us? That today, we are who we are because of Him? And so He's not an interruption of our life. He is the only thing in our life. That is the main thing. Amen? See, you choose to be in the sanctuary, in the house of God, rather than outside having barbecue. You choose to pray and read His Word. It's a matter of choice. Some people, they will schedule. That's why I say it's a matter of choice. Some people, they know there's a worship, 10.30 to 12.30. They will schedule their birthday, 10.30. We'll have our party, 10.30 to 12.30. Hello? Did you miss something? If I were you, if you have calendars on your phone, put it already there, 1030 to 1230. Worship the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the Almighty, the Great I Am, the fairest of 10,000. <laughs> I'm going to put that there. So when somebody says to me, can you come? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I can't. Uh, would you come with me? <laughs> Instead of booking the time, that's the choice, friends. Now, friends, the, the, hear me right as your, your spiritual father. You're my children. I'm teaching you the ways of God, the kingdom of God. I'm not talking about religiosity. I'm talking about what it means to be in the house of God. You are a son in the Lord. You are a believer. And I have a responsibility to tell you what you need to and how you should behave in the kingdom. We're not an association. We're not a religious group. We are the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are the kingdom of God where He is king. Amen? And this is a domain. So we've got to understand this. I'm not, please don't get offended. If you're offended, that's the devil. That's the devil giving you the offense. Because the child of God will say, come on, preach it, brother. Hallelujah. I receive it in Jesus' mighty name. Right? That, 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 that's a child of God. If you're offended, that is not from God. That is from the enemy. That's from the devil himself. Amen? Oh, hallelujah. I haven't preached here for so long. <laughs> Amen. Amen. All right, so, and you know what? You choose that. It's a choice that you make. You choose to fill up your schedule or you choose to book it for Him. And you know what? Jesus sees that. It matters to Him. Just from the story we read, it matters to Him. And so, you, do, you don't know this because it's all in the spiritual realm. You may not even understand it. You may not know it. But, Jesus sees your preferences. He sees your priorities. So, don't say you're worshiping God. I love the Lord. And He said, you're not obeying me. If you love me, you obey me. And you come into my presence. And so, that's why. See, Jesus sees your choices every day we make hundreds of choices from what to wear what to eat you know our days could get cluttered with things to do but there is something better and that something better is to be with our lord and savior the master the great i am the bread of life the prince of peace the healer the provider spend time with him and he will give you peace he will supply all your needs he will give you strength he will heal you. He promised He will never leave you nor forsake you. 
The rich young man asked Jesus, what must I do to inherit the kingdom of God? And Jesus tells him about the commandments. But the rich young man said, I have kept this since I was a boy. And Jesus replies, you know what he said? One thing you lack. Go sell your possessions and follow me. In other words, you've attained all of this, but you still lack something. And you're not following me. He said, and the man walked away sad. Why? Because other things were more important to him than following Jesus. Friends, when Jesus is calling you on Sunday, what are you telling him? Because where you go, what you do, the choice you make, it matters to him. He knows the decision of that man. All right? The man walked away sad. He failed to trust his Lord who owns all things. But Mary chose to be with Jesus. And so, as I close today, here's what King David said. I, let me just share to you what King David said. You know, King David is a man after God's own heart. And so let's see what he said. He said in Psalm 27, verse 4. And I'm going to read from the Living Bible. He said, the one thing I want from God, the thing I seek most of all, so that's the main thing, is the privilege of meditating in His temple, living in His presence every day of my life, delighting in His incomparable perfections and glory. There I'll be when troubles come. He will hide me. He will set me high on a rock, out of reach of all my enemies. Then I will bring him sacrifice and sing his praises with much joy. This is David. And that's why he's called a man after God's own heart. As a king, David could desire many things. He had everything under him. As a king, he could desire anything. But he chose to be in his presence where his eyes could be open and he could see the majesty and the glory of God. He says, it's a privilege for me to meditate in His temple. And it's a joy to sing praises to Him. Is that the desire of your heart? Is that something that inside of you that is rising up to say, God, I, I want to be in your presence. I want to meditate in your presence. The one thing I want to be is to be in your presence. Like David. Who said, that, this is it. This is my main thing. That one thing in my life, that's the main thing. And that's to be in your presence. Better is to be in the courts of the Lord than a thousand elsewhere. God wants us to be in His presence. And I encourage you today. Let that one thing be the main thing in your life.